we can get started. Um, everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Lillian and we're going to walk you through how to plan and uh, run a smart cloud migration. Um, we're joined by Colin England, um, manager of cloud migrations at AWS, and we have our own Rob Duffy, head of migration services, um, and Louis Cropper, portfolio uh, delivery manager. And we'll walk through guys, uh, walk you guys through our keynote, and then we'll have um, twenty minute breakout rooms, and then come back for some Q and A. Um, so hope you guys came ready to to have a chat. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Rob um, and hope to see you guys through to the end. Thanks, Lily. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the introduction. And yep, my name is Rob Duffy. I'm the Migration Service Line Lead at CloudReach. Um, so I'm responsible for all of our migration solutions, making sure really they, they deliver um, the promise of the cloud to our customers and, and making sure that, you know, they help those customers achieve their business goals through through cloud automation and, and cloud services. Um, and so I'll also uh, you know, maybe turn it over to Lily Kruper, who's one of our portfolio delivery managers at CloudReach to introduce herself as well. Hi, um, Lily, I've been, um, I'm here to help uh, Rob as um, and the rest of the team as we get through these engagements to help plan and uh, migrate or migrate execution on uh, the programs. So. Uh, I've been at CloudReach for about uh, four, three, three to four years, and uh, I've um, worked a couple of these things uh, with with Rob and the team and, and others. So thanks, Lily. Over. To I'm in Colin. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, happy to be here. I uh, I work on cloud migrations uh, at AWS. I'm in my fourth year and second career actually at AWS. And uh, thanks for having me and looking forward to going through this with the group. Thank you. Yeah, no, and I appreciate everyone joining us here today. Um, hopefully uh, this will be some good content and, um, you know, during the breakout, some really good discussion. Um, so feel free to, uh, you know, save some of those questions that, that come up along the way. We can talk about them in the breakouts and then we'll have a, a little, hopefully a little time at the end for some Q and A. Um, so, you know, here's uh, the overall agenda of what we want to talk about today is is really about the business drivers of, you know, companies are, are looking at that are driving them to the cloud, right? What are the things that are making them look to the cloud to solve some of their business challenges? Um, how do we accelerate the, the process of um, going to the cloud and what programs are out there? Uh, Smart Migrations is a solution that CloudReach uses to help customers get to the cloud those breakout sessions where we'll have some, some questions and Q&A and discussion, and then a review of a couple of use cases of different customers that were in different situations um, and, and how we at, we at CloudReach and, and AWS helped them get to the cloud and, and achieve some of their business goals. Um, Colin, uh, you know, I, I think um, you're gonna start out and talk about some of those business drivers. Yeah, yeah, I am. So, and, and before I get into that, um... Yeah, just just wanted to to thank you guys again for for having us here. Um, you know, CloudReach is a great partner of ours. Um, so I'm here to represent AWS, but really advocate for CloudReach and uh, for the work you guys do. I've I've been very impressed with your service delivery, with your practice, the way you've taken the migration program that we have, converted it into your own smart migrations, and added your own sort of value to it. Um, so I'll set up like a point of view from AWS, a little bit of perspective based on the volume of my migrations that we have done and are doing and some some personal experience working with those um, and then really pass it to you Rob uh, to, to go into you know how CloudReach uses our, our migration program and the funding and, and the experience for your own you know delivery to end customers like those here with us today so um, you could actually click to the next slide um, so this is a uh, this is around business drivers and and I'm going to cover a couple things here but not not every single business driver we can get into some of those in uh, in the breakouts later on I, I'd say the pretext to all of this that's not even on this slide is uh, is disruption right we're seeing disruption in nearly every sector and vertical and and geography globally. Um, we'll talk about a few use cases later that, that reference um, 
sectors like financial services and even retail, but you, you're seeing disruptions across the board. Um, hospitality is the classic one, right, with Airbnb, um, but there's quite a bit in finance, um, uh, uh, healthcare, real estate, and, and disruptions are, um, they come in many different ways, right? It could be a competitor that turns up in your in your sector that um, that wasn't there before that starts to take your customers. It could be um, something legislative or compliance related uh, that sort of came out of nowhere and you have to adapt really quickly on the fly. Um, it could be a supply chain disruption, like a ship got caught in the Suez Canal for two weeks and uh, locked up your supply chain, unforeseen disruption to your business. I'm, I'm not even going to go into the global pandemic that disrupted everything that we knew and believed as part of our working lives. The, the, the disruption is everywhere and, and, and we're in this environment of disruption, agility tends to win the day. So more and more of the conversations that we have come down to the agility that customers have when they move to the cloud. It, it is such an attractive aspect. Um, you, you see that on the upper left side. The far right side uh, around cost savings, that often tends to be the conversation starter. And uh, you know, there's disruptions that lead to a need to look at cost savings and cost savings absolutely happen in the cloud. But the reason that customers stay the course in their cloud migration is the money they save and the platform of innovation that they create to be a more agile organization. So the agility I really wanted to kind of land here with you is, is such, a, such an important aspect in this disruptive environment that we live in. You see a couple other things in terms of triggers for, and, and drivers um, that uh, may be driving you, right, on your uh, journey to the cloud. And we'd love to get into those a little bit more. Uh, Rob, why don't you go to the next slide and this is to illuminate some of the general benefits that we see and put some numbers against them in, in customers that move to AWS uh, in, a, in a migration, right? So I mentioned cost savings, um, roughly 30 to 31% we see just across the board. That's an average. Um, your mileage may vary, but you're going to save money. And this is a total cost picture, right? This is, this is accounting for for everything that you're spending your money on really, and not just like a like for like cost of monthly running in the cloud. So, um, you know, th this looks across the board at the expenses and they really do go down um, when you move to the cloud. There's efficiencies you can gain with your staff in, in, in leveraging cloud services. There's so much more they can do that they weren't able to do before because they were busy with manual tasks. The efficiency goes up um, and the agility and, and there's various ways to measure that. Um, new feature delivery is one way we measure it a lot, um, is, is also going to go up, right? So, so some business outcomes here that we see typically, and again, we can get into these a little more when we, when we talk in our small groups. Um, uh, Rob, if you would go to the next one, I just wanted to cover uh, it, briefly some common questions that we hear, and I'm not going to give you guys an answer for every single one of these. Because honestly, the answer is it depends. So you may scan this slide and say, yeah, I'm, I've, I'm wondering that, or I've asked that, or I need to ask that. And uh, we probably have an answer for you, but so much depends on where you are in your cloud journey um, and, and what your application estate looks like, what your business strategy looks like, um, what, what industry you operate in, what are your compliance and security requirements, stuff like that. All, all is impacting the answer to these. But CloudReach and AWS are here to answer these questions and help take the mystery out of the, uh, the migration. And so, um, you know, don't be afraid to, to bring these up when, uh, when we have those conversations. So I wanna get into the Migration Acceleration Program. Rob, if you'll flip to that before I pass it to you. Um, the, uh, the, the map for short or migration acceleration program is, is, is what AWS's main migration program that we offer to customers and partners like CloudReach and through partners like CloudReach. Um, CloudReach leverages this for their smart migration offering that's also here in the slide and adds their own value to it. I'm gonna step through a couple of these um, main components and then pass it to Rob to go deeper on the uh, CloudReach offering. But the migration methodology is probably one of the most valuable aspects of this. We've done thousands of migrations at AWS and are in the midst of thousands right now. 
we have the experience, we have the know-how, and we want to bring that to your migration too. So we have, we have patterns for typical application migrations. Um, we have experience and we have learned things. Um, I'll share with you a couple things we've learned. Um, the best migrations are experience-based. That means as you get into a migration, actually begin to do the migration um, rather than sit around and talk about it for too long. Um, the faster you get some workloads to the cloud, the sooner you'll be able to see the benefits and these fl the flywheel starts for you to be able to see um, you know, what the benefits are and the reasons for doing this migration. Um, following the, uh, the, the, the experience that we've had, we've also learned that it, it, it's absolutely crucial to have a champion internally who is going to be able to lead out in your organization as, as obstacles, challenges, and uh, disputes come up in your cloud migration. It's inevitable, right? There's going to be blockers. There, there's going to be um, some landmines. We need somebody internally in your organization to really be, be the champion for the migration. Without that, the migrations don't go as well or they fail. Um, and then the last thing we've learned that I want to land with you is the biggest obstacle to a good migration is almost never technical. It's people. So it's a natural human thing to be averse to change and you're attracted to the status quo and breaking an entire organization off of that and doing the change management is really often the, the most difficult part of a cloud migration. Um, we have partner tools and we'll get into a little bit of that later. CloudReach has Cloudomize. It's a fantastic tool for analysis and TCO. Um, we use partners, right, in, in the, on the right-hand side, CloudReach being a, a migration competency partner. We could not, you know, deliver those quality outcomes for you without partners like CloudReach. Um, managed services is something you may want to consider and happen, why, as the, the destination for a lot of migrations. Um, if you don't want to carry the onus of managing your cloud, CloudReach has offerings that can help you do that and, and, and optimize your environment and really get the, the most benefit out of it. There's training, there's uh, certifications available to, uh, to spin up you and your, your teams on AWS and running in the cloud. And the last piece is investment. We'll talk a bit about the investment later. I'll just say with, with MAP, there are some thresholds. So it's a, it's a larger migration that we'll, we'll look to fund and it's sort of a sliding scale. So the bigger your migration is, the more AWS will invest and invest in cloud reach. And Rob is gonna cover that in a moment. So this is sort of the summary map program as it feeds into the smart migrations as offered by CloudReach. And now I'd like to pass it over to you then, Rob, to, uh, to continue this with your offering. And Rob, you're on mute. Okay, sorry about that. Gotcha. Um, thank you. That was a really good overview, I think, of um, a lot of the drivers for migrations as well as some of the challenges, right? And I, 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 you know, really like the way you framed up sort of those challenges, right? And it's not a technical problem anymore with migrations. Those, those problems have been solved, right? And like we yeah. understand technically how to migrate. It's, it's really about how do you overcome the business challenges and how do you derive the most business value out of this change, right? For your, for your organization. I think that's a big, uh, that's the biggest challenge that people face right now is really because you don't want to go through all this change, but not get anything out of it, not change your business for the better. Right. And so how do you a plan for that and b quantify that? And, and so, you know, those are those are things that we think about when we think about migrations. And we we've built 10 years of experience into what we call smart migrations to help customers generate that business value as quickly as possible. Right. And so. Um, the way in which we, we try and take the AWS MAP program and really just accelerate it as quickly as we can using all of the best practices that we at CloudReach have learned over the last 10 years of migrating enterprise customers um, to the cloud, applying those best practices, applying the patterns and the, um, the processes that we've developed along the way, and trying to automate as much of that as possible, right? And so we, we're using... Um, you know, the, the DevOps model here where we want to, you know, invest in the process so that we can make that process better. Um, and, and that's how we've over time developed that and really in the last year or so is, is focused in on the, the process of migration. So using MAP as a uh, framework, um, we've then taken and seen where, you know, how can CloudReach 
apply its unique opinion of the best way to migrate for customers? How do we apply that and then optimize it? And so, you know, we've looked at every stage of the migration process from the proposal stage, right? Where, you're, you know, a lot of times you'll, you can overanalyze a migration. You can analyze and, and analyze again and again and again and, and trying to look at all the different ways to migrate. But, you know, what we want to do is not tell you the 15 different ways you can migrate, but really try and give you the, the best way to migrate uh, based on our experience of working with customers that are similar to you. Um, and so we can do that very quickly with a very limited amount of information coming from you. So there's very there's a lot less friction on your side and you can also, um, you know, get the information that you need very quickly and easily. Um, the way in which we deliver it, we use automation, we reusable patterns, code, reusable code, so that we can deliver those migration solutions to you um, very quickly in a standardized way, right? And, um, and then, you know, the outcome there is that faster time to value, right? So you're enjoying the cloud faster, right? And, and like Colin was saying, you know, time really is the, um, the enemy um, in a migration because, you know, the longer it goes on, the more complicated it is for your business to try and run two different environments, to try and, um, you know, spend time on the migration, plus all the other uh, daily business tasks that you have to accomplish, right? So what we want to do is provide you with a program that you can get in, um, get your applications moved to the cloud as quickly as possible, and then we can begin, you know, starting those modernization processes after. Uh, and so, you know, that is the benefit that we, we've applied with smart migrations to overlay the, the AWS MAP program. Uh, and so, and I'll ask um, maybe Lily to, to talk a little bit about exactly how we do that, right? And how do we apply that process and what are the actual phases and steps that we go through as part of a, uh, a smart migration process that starts with an assessment. It, it, then moves into a mobilization phase where we kind of build out the environment and prepare for a migration factory uh, where we were able to do the, the actual moving of data and moving of applications in a very standardized and streamlined approach. So Lily, maybe you could talk a little about, about some of the icons on here and, and you know, some of the more important ones uh, to making the process go smoothly and efficiently. Sure. Uh, sure, thank you. And um, I just want to pick up on what uh, both Rob and uh, Colin uh, have referred to a couple of times. And, and this, it is definitely a very common theme and, uh, in the migrations that I've worked through. Uh, time, 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 time. Uh, the more time you spend in the migration phase, the more time you analyze, the more fearful it becomes. And then you uh, become, uh, there's a bit of analysis paralysis uh, that tends to happen. Uh, confusion in the organization. Um, and basically, at, at that point, uh, some some general fatigue that certainly happens. So it is a, it is a very real thing. So uh, at the what the with the, the smart migrations, uh, Cloud Reach likes uh, with it, uh, which is uh, overlaid by the MAP program. Uh, we like to use Cloudomize, which will definitely uh, it's an agent that goes through that is installed on the machines in your data centers, uh, and and it, it gives us a whole host of information from things like uh, the, the licensing, the, the platform, the sizing, uh, it, and all of this information is generated into your business case and consolidated. So uh, certainly uh, it saves the manual efforts of having to troll through your uh, CMBB or maybe some sort of application spreadsheet, such as a catalog that some uh, I've seen out there. Uh, it can be a very manual process, but the, the Cloudomize uh, agent certainly really speeds that up uh, immensely. Uh, we take that information, we will actually pre-populate that with, um, with our templates, our, our runbooks. We have uh, uh, reusable templates, reusable runbooks, uh, so that we can actually get all this information out there. So the, the information goes in two places. One is your business case. The other is actually into the application-specific uh, runbooks, which will help to define what your target architecture recommendations look like. Uh, where they're going, where they uh, where they came from, where they're going, um, and uh, and in order for you to be able to uh, and apply uh, your security um, safeguards, the definitions, uh, that's all not 
uh, within Cloudomize, but it is part of the runbook and uh, some of the workshops that we actually do conduct to make sure that we have a good understanding of that. Uh, and that goes down under platform planning. So where you see cloud landing zone, network and security and the operating model, there's a considerable amount of time that's spent there to make sure that we have, we have questionnaires in place. Uh, they're, uh, they're pretty uh, comprehensive in these template formats. So we just got to work through and be able to help guide the, uh, the best practices, make the decisions, and then apply them back to the uh, deployments. And so speaking to the deployments now, uh, uh, all of this, this work between the, um, the application, the application patterns, the security uh, definitions will all be um, considered as part of the uh, pipeline, which is we'll have all your safeguards in place um, from the pipelines, which is again, reusable, uh, a lot of reusable code that is done in there. We take and we convert that into a bit of a, a factory. So the factory is your uh, migration runbooks, your application design, the, which will run through a pipeline um, and the whole rinse and repeat of application migration learnings, um, uh, especially since on the, on the first part, you wanna make sure you get through some of the easiest, uh, the low, uh, the easy, the less complex, get that muscle memory in place so you uh, can take that and translate to the uh, larger, more complex which can still happen on a very rapid scale because by then muscle memory has certainly kicked in. All of the uh, standards are in place and it's just now uh, reusing all of that uh, learnings and uh, templates from previous. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. If anyone has yeah. any specific questions on those, we can certainly cover them later. Sure. Yeah, no, and I think that is a good overview of, of that process. And I mean, Lily, one thing that I, I, when I think about this is there's a lot of work that happens up front, right, to make sure that you have the right plan in place, the right, um, you know, uh, model, the right methodology in place, right? You know, how does that affect the downstream work, right? By, by making sure you kind of get everything set up correctly, how does that affect, you know, things downstream? Yeah, I think I can answer that with uh, um, the traditional model of a waterfall approach. Uh, it's usually broken up by a third, a third, a third. So a third of your time is spent in uh, planning, a third of your time is spent, is spent in building, and a third of your time is spent in testing and deploy. The planning phase, uh, there's always something that's going to be missed. And this is where we, uh, because of our reusable, template, reusable templates and the information that we have collected as an assessment, that is all automated and pre-populated. That's where that time gets compressed significantly there. Uh, I don't know if anyone um, remembers back in the day, you used to go down and you spec out your machine. So I need 16 gigabytes of memory and um, uh, oh, and this is gonna talk to here and this port on this port, oh, what port was that? Uh, but all of the, uh, the Cloudomize tools, the, the Cloudomize, Cloudomize tool has the agent, all that information. So we, what we'll do with that information and also a, a proposal as to what the target should look like, right sizing your instances, uh, making those recommendations on those uh, based off of the uh, performance it's, uh, the agent is uh, monitoring uh, in, uh, back in the data center, make the recommendations. So we'll pre-populate the, um, uh, the application designs and to review it and validate it with a team uh, confirm it. So that process has gone from literally weeks down to a couple of hours uh, if we have the right folks in the call. And, and I say a couple of hours uh, that accommodates questions and maybe a few follow up. Yeah, yeah, no, thanks Lily. And that's, yeah, it, it really is, the whole process is about, right, generating and maintaining the momentum all the way through the process, right? Because you want to be, you don't want to have in the migration factory be thinking about a problem for the first time, right? You want to make sure that you've, you've already planned for that. And, you know, and if you do come up against something that you're not expecting, right? That's why those are cycles, right? And you learn every time you go through that cycle in the migration factory. And so that those learnings kind of get worked back into the next cycle. So this process gets faster and faster as you go along. 
Um, and so, on, you know, one thing I also want to mention, and Colin talked about the, the funding, right? Um, so with AWS, right, there are several funding programs in place that we can apply so that, you know, a lot of these um, professional services and a lot of the activities that happen in here are funded um, in one way or another um, significantly by AWS to help you get to the cloud and start using some of those benefits, right? And so in the earlier stages where we have an assessment, right, if you meet, meet the um, criteria for a map, you, we can fund up to $60,000 to give you a business case so that you understand not just the technical plan for migrating to the cloud, but also the, the, um, the business goals, right? Like in, in the business value you can generate by migrating to the cloud. Uh, and you can track those KPIs after you get there to make sure that you're uh, meeting the goals that you set out for your for your migration, right? Um, we also, during the mobilization phase where we're planning things out and in, in, in actually creating the landing zones and the getting the infrastructure ready for the migration, right? We, we AWS will match up to 50% of the scope of work there, right? So half the, the cost of all that development work and all that planning that, that Lily was talking about that generates that momentum is funded by AWS. And then finally, you know, getting the, the actual workloads into the cloud, once you've done, if you've done that um, planning work appropriately, that becomes the easy part and the kind of rinse and repeat um, methodology, right? So there's, you can generate credits from AWS for that, for that post-migration, um, for the for you to use post migration so as you're migrating workloads to the cloud you can generate some credits so that you can as you ramp up in the cloud you can use some of those credits to pay for that right so all throughout the way the map program not only provides the methodology but they help with the funding aspects to make this a economically viable project uh, to get you to the cloud uh, and so you know these are the benefits that you know we look at when we think of cloud migration right it's and in, in, in why we think smart migrations and the way in which we approach migrations are the best, because it does draw on our decade of experience of doing these migrations. We've seen all these problems and challenges before, and we've built in those learnings into our process, right? We use, uh, we are data-driven in the way in which we attack these problems, right? And we use in-house software like Cloudomize, um, which we talked about that does those assessments. Um, and we use that data that is generated from that tool all throughout the process. Um, you know, we, we make sure that the process moves forward very quickly to eliminate the assessment fatigue. And really, you know, it is always aligned to that partner funding, just like I showed you on that last slide, so that we can, you know, get you to the cloud quickly and really kind of unlock the, the cloud value um, with, you know, by getting you to the cloud as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Right. Um, so, you know, now that you know a little bit about our approach, the AWS MAP program, uh, I think what we're going to do is jump into those breakout rooms where we have a couple of questions um, that we'll, we'll like to discuss with you. And, and hopefully, um, you know, some of the information you've seen here will, uh, um, you know, you can bring some of your own questions into those breakout rooms. So I think, uh, Lillian, are you going to uh, put us into some rooms so that we can uh, start those conversations? Um, yep, you should all be getting notifications to join the breakout room. So um, give me just one second.
<laughs> Hi, Lillian. Hi. Hey, Lillian. Hey, guys. I think we'll just wait for everybody. To okay. Come. Sorry, I was on mute. We uh, came back faster than I was expecting, so. I'm Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was mid sentence. That's good. That's okay, though. I'm so yeah. <laughs> but okay. I got the warning. I got the warning. Okay. That's yeah. Um, yeah. I think everybody's back. So, um, Rob, you can lead us through the rest of the uh, meetup. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, let me uh, start by, uh, you know, so one of the things that we talked a little bit about in our group, like I said, it went, the time went by a lot faster than I was expecting. So um, somebody brought up a really good question that I, I thought was interesting um, was on, you know, on installing these tools in a customer's environment, right? Like how do you ensure that they're, uh, you're not, uh, they're not a security risk uh, in your environment, which is a great question. Um, and obviously something that's been in the news recently um, and something that is always a concern, you know, when we look at these environments. So I think there's a couple of ways in which we, we obviously precautions that we take. And so just take a second to talk about that. And so one way is, you know, especially with the tools that we use, we make sure that they have the least privileged um, and they're accessing the least amount of data that's necessary, right? So we don't, we don't want access to customer data when we're trying to understand what the infrastructure looks like. It doesn't, we don't need that information to do our analysis. What the information we need is like the CPU telemetry, right? And, and how's the CPU, how hot is the CPU running? And so that's the information that we focus on so that, you know, we're not gathering information we don't necessarily need. Um, so th those are kind of, you know, that's one way in which we really focus on making sure that, you know, our, our process is safe and secure. And it is something that we've spent a lot of time with and we've deployed and done this process with, you know, um, very sensitive and secure um, companies like banks, financial services, hospitals, uh, oil and gas um, providers. So, you know, that it is something that we're very aware of. We spend a lot of time and we, with customers to ensure that they understand the security uh, posture um, that we're deploying there and, and, and that they feel comfortable with it. And so, you know, we have a lot of different ways to mediate um, any of those security problems. So, yeah, but it is a good question because it is something that is constantly on, on our, um, our minds as we talk with customers. Um, what about you, Lillian and, and Colin? Did you guys, uh, what kind of conversations did you guys have? Any uh, good observations that people had? So, so in our group, yes, uh, we, that, uh, that very same uh, question about um, the agent and the security and what kind of information it's collecting and the resistance on that. Uh, so, so all of your responses uh, were very, uh, so, so that was a very similar. I think the other uh, topic in, uh, that came up uh, was a little more focused on how, uh, how do we go about uh, defining a strategy for the applications. And that was a really interesting uh, one as well. We do tend to focus a lot on re-host and re-platform as a migration strategy. Uh, when you start talking about categorizing your strategies into the other areas, such as retire, that's kind of self-explanatory. I think that the, uh, the, the organizations, the companies themselves uh, have a good solid process in place for managing that. Same things for some of the other ones, such as a repurchase. Uh, the re-architect re or refactor uh, in that one is not so much a migration as a whole re-architecting and a bit of a build, and that does have a, a, a track that kind of goes off on, the, on its own. Uh, so the migrations, the smart migrations, do tend to focus more on uh, retire, I'm sorry, uh, re-host and re-platform. So great conversation in that area. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, our side too. We we actually zoomed right into question three on the lift and shift versus replatform. <laughs> we threw we threw up all three questions at the beginning, and that was the one that uh, that we zeroed in on. And 
Um, we, we have no silver bullet answer on that one naturally, right? It, it, and we had some great conversation about it. it really depends on so many things and the nature of the application and then the services available on, on, the, on the side of the cloud or the destination and where it's going and um, you know, how it ought to be designed. There's a timing dimension to it. There's a technical dimension to it. There's, um, you know, it, it, it's, it comes down to each application and workload and each has its own, you know, identity, which may, which may or may not warrant, um, it, it, you know, it would vary in terms of which directional path it took to uh, to migrate. We all kind of agreed lift and shift was was you know quick a way to get quick value, um, but it wasn't like necessarily a way to get the the long term value out of your cloud investment. Um, mm -hmm. And so it really depends on the situation, you know, in a given. Uh, IT estate or portion of the IT estate, but um, it, there, there's room in our hearts for both. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think the key there is is um, the lift and shift, right? That's not the end, right? That's just the beginning, right? And it, it is, like you said, you get to the cloud, but really to generate all the value from the cloud, you, you also need to start to modernize and optimize on those cloud services to really generate and unlock the value of the cloud. Yeah. And yeah, let me... Um, pull up three particular case studies that we did and work three particular customers that we worked with in the past. And uh, I'll just go through these really quickly because I know where time is running out. Um, but, you know, so um, in this first particular one, there's a, um, a digital native company that they, they were already in the cloud. They had already, you know, started to build things in, in AWS and done a lot of work there. But what, a lot of that had evolved over time, right? And so it didn't necessarily have a plan. It just kind of things grew. And so this is what we see a lot with customers is, you know, they started out with something in AWS and then they added a couple more things and a couple more things. And, and also now you have some, you know, you, you got real production apps and infrastructure and you have significant amount of business um, that depends on AWS or the cloud but you may not have a full plan for that. And that was the case with this particular customer. And so they came to us and, and asked us to help them develop, you know, really that grown up plan for the cloud. cloud. And so we, we did that. We went through and we looked at their security and their governance and we helped them um, create a, a company-wide holistic plan for how they should be using the cloud, how they should be protecting their data in the cloud, and, and how they can manage it all in the cloud. So you don't end up with, you know, it just being like the wild west and everybody's doing whatever they want out there. You know, although, you know, the cloud makes it really easy to try out new things and start up new services. Um, but the problem with that is the cloud makes it really easy to start up new things and try out new services because, you know, then anybody can do it. You don't know, really know what's going on. So. You know, the idea is getting your hands around governments is a uh, is really important one. And so, you know, as like uh, Lily was talking about earlier during a part of our process is that that's how we build from the beginning. Right. And so when we migrate a customer to the cloud, we're looking about not only how are you going to move, how are you going to start using the cloud day one, but how do you how do you control it in the future and how do you manage it and maintain it in the future so that. Um, it, it can be something that you can depend on and it doesn't become a, a, uh, a dependent, um, a problem for you. Um, so that was, you know, that particular customer and, and really the, the moral there is it's never too late to, to start that and take on that kind of planning. Um, you know, they had, like I said, we're already in the cloud, but they realized that they were kind of having a problem. Another one was a global retailer. Um, and this one was, you know, an interesting project because it, you know, they had a hardware refresh. So they had some kind of external trigger that was forced, you know, that kind of really forced them to migrate to the cloud. And they wanted to do it quickly. Um, they had a board mandate, um, but their challenge was they just had that analysis paralysis and they, you know, were going around in circles trying to figure out how to get to the cloud. And so what we did with them is we, we developed a pilot program um, and moved a couple of applications to the cloud. I think Colin talked about this earlier. It's like, you know, just getting something moved, showing some small wins and victories earlier in the process is going to generate momentum for you. And that's how we worked with that particular um, retailer. And it worked out really well. Um, so once they got some of that experience and they kind of got over that fear of the unknown, 
um, they were able to then start this um, migration process that they've been really just putting off and delaying because they, they were just, you know, didn't know what to expect and they were, they were scared of that. And so, you know, by, you know, doing those proof of concepts and lighthouse migrations, we were able to kind of get them over that hurdle. And, um, you know, they were able to move their entire estate in a very short amount of time after that because they had the confidence um, that those early projects gave them. Uh, and then the third one is, a, is another interesting organization, right? Because um, this was a company that, you know, they, are, again, had an external tr uh, trigger that was forcing them to move. Their data center lease was expiring, right? And so they had a very tight deadline. Um, but they didn't want to just do only lift and shift um, to the cloud. They wanted to optimize several aspects of their migration. Um, and so, you know, what we did there is we put in a process um, so that we could migrate them um, very quickly. And we had some optimization um, workflows that we built in a factory-like way, right? So helping them migrate from legacy database applications to platform as a service databases. Um, and so that way we were able to get them to the cloud quickly um, and generate a lot of value for them as we did that. Uh, so, you know, that's just three different examples of different customers that kind of been in different situations and moving to the cloud. And so with that, I do want to, um, uh, you know, I know we're running out of time. We just got a couple more minutes left, but I do want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, I think the breakout rooms were, were fun and uh, it was a good discussion. I want to thank uh, Lillian and Colin for, for uh, joining me and, and being a co-host with me on this. And um, also, you know, some of the actionable takeaways is, is really, you know, trying to think about how you can get those early wins in your migration process. Um, you know, balancing precision and speed, right? Like it, it's important to keep momentum going. Um, and, and so, and, you know, we would be happy, um, you know, like some of those assessment programs that we talked about, you know, a lot of those are free to get started, right? So there's very low cost um, to you as an organization to engage with us. Um, we can leverage the funding from AWS to help you get started on these, these cloud migrations. So, you know, if you'd like to talk to us about how you can do that and how you can get started using the, the tools like Cloudomize and gaining some of the insight that it can provide, um, definitely reach out to our sales team. We'd be happy to talk to you um, and, and get you started. And like I said, at, at very low cost and low risk uh, to you and your organization. So once again, thank you very much for, for joining us today. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out to us. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Colin. Um, uh, we'll follow up or I'll follow up with uh, a recording of this. So you guys will get it in your inbox in the next day or so. Um, and again, if you have any questions, just please go ahead and send us an email, sales at cloudridge.com. Um, thanks again, and you guys have a, a wonderful afternoon. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.